Hey everybody, welcome to my Q&A. So I went to Instagram and asked for people to send in any questions they might have for me. So those are the ones I'm gonna answer now. If I don't get to your question or if you think of a question that nobody asked, um, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to answer some of those questions in the comments. And, and then I guess if you really like this video and um, you have lots more questions and want me to do another one, let me know. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I did get lots of questions about who who I am. Am I Jessica's helper or sister? Or am I related to Jessica? What's my role working for Jess? Uh, so for those who are unfamiliar or new, I'm Hannah, I'm Jessica's sister, a uh, younger sister. We are um, six, six years apart. Jessica's taking a nap and just asked me where Zoe is. Right next to mom. Every time. <laughs> so I also got a lot of questions about my experience growing up um, as a, just in general, as a sibling of someone with special needs. Um, my experience having an older sister um, I'm gonna answer some of those and I got some really 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 good questions one of them was just in general overall how did Jay's disabilities affect your childhood that's always really hard for me to answer because that's all I've ever known you know so like I don't I don't know anything different and I you know I am who I am and I don't know how that would have changed or how it would be different, you know. One thing I always do think, and this goes along with another question, how is it taking the role of big sister with Jess growing up? There came a point very, very, very early on where I became the big sister. Hey darling, you go downstairs. You go downstairs. You're a good girl. Where's mama? Even though I'm, you know, I'm the little sister and so I, I do think that I just very naturally learned a lot of responsibility and a lot of compassion and, you know, like caretaking skills very, very early on, more so than I would imagine most of my peers, friends did at that age. But you know, other than that, um, I, I don't really know that it affected my childhood. I mean, it's like for me, I had a normal childhood. It just, you know, it just, it was what it was, you know? Um, did you and Jess always have a close relationship? And yeah, we did. We're closer now than I'm an adult, than we were as kids, I think. And I, yeah, I just, not that the, we weren't close as kids because we were, but um, anyway, ever since I became an adult, we're even closer, which I think is normal. Um, but yeah, we've always been close. Do you ever get jealous of the extra attention that Jess gets? And the short answer to that now is no. <laughs> um, I, hate being the center of attention. I am very introverted and I mostly like nobody to pay attention to me ever. Um, so that's never been a problem and that um, goes along with what advice can you give about sibling support? Did you ever feel like Jess's needs came first? And that, that's it's a complicated answer because yes, often her needs did come first but I never felt, never once felt growing up like my needs were less important. Yes, her needs often came first, literally in the moment. Um, and I never had a problem with that because I know that they needed to. Um, and that, you know, it, it was important and I can wait, you know? And like, if I ever had an emergency, you know, whatever, like my parents were always there for me and even when I wasn't in an emergency and 
so yes, her needs came first, but I never felt like I was put second, if that makes sense. Like, I never felt slighted or never felt like, I don't know. I mean, it was never, that was never an issue for me. Um, you know, it just, it just really, really never was. And I, you know, I think part of that's... <laughs> Just because of who I am as a person, I, like I said, I hate being the center of attention, and, um, so that's part of it. But also, our parents, you know, made a very serious effort to make sure that <clears throat> we never felt like, you know, she was getting all the attention and we weren't getting any, you know, they, they really, really tried their best with that. And so I never, I never had a problem with that at all. Uh, growing up, did kids tease you because of Jessica? No. Um, we grew up in a, in a small-ish, close community and everybody knew Jessica, you know, and uh, even the people that didn't like when I made friends at school and you know, my little friends would come over, like it was never a problem. Nobody ever made fun of me or made fun of her or to me or anything like that. Um, that that kind of thing was never a problem. So, advice about sibling support. Just make sure you're talking and listening and make sure just they understand what child disabilities are, what their needs are. Um, and that just because they have these extra or special or different needs doesn't mean that the siblings needs are any less important. So then here's a really, really good question. As a sibling of special needs, I have at times been met with what seems to be pity or sympathy. While I don't think it comes from a negative place, it still feels insulting, uncomfortable, and just way off base from my experience. Can you think of a time when you've experienced someone that seems to feel sorry for you as a sibling of special needs and how you felt or responded? So, I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of a specific situation. I have experienced that in terms of other people feeling sorry for me because of the extra responsibility or anything like that and like I, I think like in high school a lot of times I would you know, need to come straight home after school to help out um you know there were peers and teachers that would feel sorry for me I guess or like sort of acted like they did you know because I couldn't just do whatever I wanted to but I never felt like I missed out on anything um I never felt like, you know, it was a burden or anything like that. I think I was always, uh, and that, that's, that hasn't happened at all in a long time, but I think I was always just really taken aback because I never, I never saw it that way. And I was always really surprised when people perceived it as something to feel sorry for me about. It's just, you know, I, I love my family. I love my sister. I love my parents. And... We've always been very, very close as a family, and yeah, this is a responsibility of mine as a sister, as a daughter, you know, to help take care of her, and yeah, I mean, it is part of my responsibility, but I've never viewed that as a negative thing, and it's not a negative thing, it's just, it's just part of my life, and I, um, I've always wanted to be as helpful as possible and I've, you know, I've always wanted to share that r responsibility as much as I can, so I've never viewed it that way and, and I was personally always very, sh like, surprised and shocked when, when somebody acted like they were sorry for me about it. Um, but yeah, that was a very, very, very good question. Does Jess pick up on the fact that you guys talk about her progress throughout her life? That's a great question and some, I mean it depends, it depends on what kind of mood she's in honestly and 
you know, is there something she's really focused on? Um, most of the time, well, I don't really know. It's a really complicated answer. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. When we talk about her improvements and how far she's come, sometimes she'll get clued in on that and be interested and ask about it. We've talked to her about her <coughs> autism and her anxiety. Yeah, she does pick up on that sometimes and sometimes she doesn't. Favorite Jessica memory. It's a really, really hard one because there's, there's so many good ones. The first thing that comes to mind is like, I don't know if it's Christmas Eve or a couple days before Christmas or something and she's sitting in front of the tree with all her packages and I just remember sitting there taking pictures of her and she's so excited and that kind of thing is my favorite. Just the joy she finds out of life is so special and there's many of us that often struggle to find that kind of joy out of a lot of things so um that's that's just my favorite is just being able to watch her joyfulness all right so i'm gonna shift a little bit i did get lots of questions about jess and my relationship with jess i got some personal questions as well, so I'm going to answer those. There are a lot of questions about my job, what I do um, for a job. Somebody asked what I'm what I'm studying at uni, which I guess means college. Um, so I did graduate college. I'm not in college anymore. I uh, my degree is in American Sign Language and English Interpreting. It's a bachelor's degree. I do have a bachelor's degree, and I am a sign language interpreter for my local school system and I do work at an elementary school. There were some questions about how I got into doing sign language, how you chose to work with deaf students, um, how and when did you decide to become an ASL interpreter. So it's kind of a long story and I'll, I'll, I'll spare all the, all the details. Um, but a lot of you might know I got um, very like almost deathly ill right out of high school. Um, so that kind of derailed all my college plans. And I went to college for a long time and couldn't decide what to do. Um, so I dropped out and just kind of coasted for a while. I mean, I had a, you know, I had a job, but it just took me a really, 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 really long time to decide what to do. I was like, you know what? I wonder if there are any careers to do with sign language. I bet there's not. And so I researched it and saw um, that you could be a sign language interpreter. And I was like, that's it. That's what I want to do. That's, that's how I <laughs> decided. Um, and so that was, gosh, I guess. 2016. So I found the program I wanted and applied, got in, went to college, and I graduated in 2019 in the spring and was able to get a job right away, right out of school. And I've stayed there uh, and I love it. Um, can you do some sign language? Um, Sure, I'll do a little bit. Um, I'll sign my name and show you guys my name sign. So that's my name sign. Um, can you share a little bit about your job? Yeah, like I said, I, I work at an elementary school. I work with lots of different kids, so we, um, we have, I, I can't tell you, you know, too many details because, you know, confidentiality and all that, but we do have more than 10 students at the school that I work at. Um, and so I, I work with not just one student, I work with lots of different students of um, different ages and different levels. Um, so it's really, it's really cool and I really, really do enjoy it. All right, so I got some questions about my puppy. 
Uh, yes, I'm getting a puppy and I haven't gotten him yet. I'm getting him in the middle of May. He's going to be a standard poodle, just like little Zoe. Um, I'm very, 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 very excited. <laughs> Hello, darling. Zoe is desperate for attention right now. Um, so this person says, who got to name your puppy? It's a cute name. So I'm going to name my puppy Daryl. Um, I did pick out the name. Ma Will you just chill out? Mom actually suggested it. I was um, getting her help picking out a name. Um, and she was reading from a list of name suggestions online. And she said that one and I just knew it was the one. This person says, no questions, just sending hugs and positive vibes. Love your haircut and excited for your pup adventure. Me too, I'm so, 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 so excited. Um, I'm, I think I'm gonna be really extra as a dog mom, um, but I'm just really excited. Who will watch your pup while you're at work? Grandma daycare? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Um, Mom very, very nicely, kindly offered to watch him while I'm at work. So I planned on getting him after um, work was out for the summer. And then the litter of puppies was born a little earlier than I expected. So I am going to have two weeks of work left after I get him. So mom's going to watch him during the day and um, Marlo um, is going to help too. She offered to help. And I think for those two weeks, you know, he's going to be so little and sleeping most of the day anyway, so it won't be too bad. And then um, I'll be out for the summer. And then she is going to watch him when I go back to work in August. And by then, um, he should be plenty old enough that he and Zoe are able to um, play together and entertain themselves for a large portion of the day. So really anxious, honestly, about adding that extra layer of, um, you know, potential stress uh, to mom who already has so much um, to deal with, but she's looking forward to Zoe being uh, a little bit extra preoccupied. So that'll be really good. All right, so then I got some questions about myself. <laughs> Um, Tanner wants to know, hey Tanner, Tanner asks, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. This person wants to know, what makes you happy? You are a great sister and daughter. First of all, thank you. Um, what makes me happy? A lot of times for me, it's, you know, very simple things. Drinking my coffee on a Saturday morning. Watching TV shows I've seen a thousand times. Spending time with my family, being outside, things like that. <laughs> Saskia coming in with the hard questions. She wants to know something we should know about your mom. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking about what to say. My mom's literally the best. <laughs> um, and I know that every, you know, everybody thinks their mom is the best, but my mom is actually the best. And she's just incredible and she's so driven to be the best that she can be for her kids for her parents for her siblings for her whole family and um she always at all times works so hard and tries her best and everything and she's just my hero in every way I think this question is also from Saskia a place you would like to visit there's lots of places that I would like to visit I'm a big fan of the musical Hamilton and so I've never I've been to New York one time but I've never been on like a good long trip up to the uh, north, north, northeast <laughs> of the northern, northeastern United States. What's that called? New England area. I would enjoy going on a semi long trip up there. Um, 
all the history. Uh, you know, I I do enjoy learning about American history, so yeah, I'd like to do that. And then I'd like to visit uh, Italy sometime, Greece. So those are a few places I'd like to visit. Um, Susie wants to know, do you ever get recognized when you're out in town and how do you feel about that? So I've never been myself alone uh, recognized by anybody. One time when we were at Disney all together, we were recognized, but um, I've never been recognized myself. Anyway, we only started like our popularity really started increasing along with like when COVID happened. So I haven't really been out and even before then, <laughs> I'm really a homebody and hardly ever go anywhere, um, which I'm working on it. But no, I've never been recognized, but I think it would be kind of cool for someone to come up to me and be like, hey, I know you. <laughs> oh, there's some questions about my neck. Um, so yes, I did have surgery um, this past October on my spine. <laughs> um, I had ACDF which I don't even know if I can remember, anterior cervical discoscopy and fusion. I had a bulging disc, herniated disc, whatever you want to call it, and um, it was causing a lot, a lot of pain um, in my shoulder and uh, down my arm. I did get a, a cervical fusion, so instead of getting like a, like a fake um, disc, uh, like replacement or whatever, I got... Um, there's like, you know, spacers in there or something and then the bone's gonna like fuse together. So yeah, that was that. It was crazy <laughs> afterwards because I was in so much like pain and my neck felt so unstable, but my pain was gone as soon as I woke up, woke up from surgery and I had been excruciating pain um, for years and nothing, nothing at all would make it any better. And then when I woke up from surgery, it was all gone. So, I mean, it's the best thing I've ever done for myself. What's your favorite movie? I have two favorite movies. They're just like in different genres, you'll understand a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, currently, my favorite movie is Frozen 2. <laughs> I love that movie. It's one of those I just think you can watch over and over and over and over and over again, and I never get tired of it. I bought the soundtrack and I listen to it all the time and whenever I just want something on in the background that I can just chill out to, I turn it on. I turn it on to fall asleep to a lot. So that really is my favorite movie, but for a very long time, up until that movie came out, um, my favorite movie was Pirates of the Caribbean and um, Curse of the Black Pearl. That's another one of those. I can just watch it over and over and over again and I just never get tired. Also, the music in both is just amazing. No questions, but just wanted to say how lovely you are to your mom. Thank you. Uh, okay, this is not serious, but who's your favorite on Supernatural? Sam or Dean? <laughs> um, so, you may or may not know, um, I am obsessed with Supernatural. Um, it's my favorite show ever. I mean, in my personal opinion, it's the greatest show of all time. Uh, if you haven't watched it, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Watch it on Netflix. All uh, 15 seasons are there. Watch it. It's the best. Um, my favorite is Dean. So those are all the questions that I'm going to answer today. Um, so I hope uh, you liked this video. I hope that, you know, maybe you learned something you wanted to know, a few things you didn't want to know, um, and like I said before, um, if you have any other questions that I didn't answer, you can comment them down below, and if you have lots more questions and want me to do this again, I'd be happy to, if you want me to elaborate on anything, let me know, comment down below, and thanks so, so much for watching, and I'll see you soon, bye!